Speaking of things that are counterproductive, harmful, and pointless, let's check in on the Human Rights Campaign, the largest LGBT rights activist organization in the United States that frankly is really just a Democratic Party uh, activist organization at this point. They just put out an interesting new uh, announcement. Just days into Gay Pride Month, the Human Rights Campaign has declared a state of emergency for LGBTQ plus people in America. HRC is one of the biggest gay rights groups in the country, and it says that it's making the declaration because of an unprecedented and dangerous spike in discriminatory legislation across the country. HRC counts 70 anti-LGBTQ bills signed into law in just 2023 alone, already more than double last year's total. The group is also releasing an Americans Fight Back guidebook to help people file complaints for violations of civil rights and to find employment in what it calls safer states. The emergency declaration is the first in the HRC's 40 years of fighting for civil rights. Y'all, I am so tired. The hysteria and hyperbole has just got to stop. The idea that in 2023, in this day and age, is some unique level of crisis or emergency for LGBT Americans is just laughable. It's just absurd. It has no basis in reality. It's completely detached from reality. The human rights campaign has been around since the 1980s. They've literally never declared this kind of national emergency in their entire history as an organization, even during the AIDS epidemic that was killing gay people while society and government basically failed to care and failed to step up and address it, even when there were still anti-sodomy laws on the books that literally made it illegal to be gay, and while gay marriage was just a pipe dream. Now, all of those things have been addressed and ameliorated uh, almost to complete extent, and yet today they're claiming that we're in a unique state of emergency because of anti-LGBT sentiment? I do think there is some backlash that's emerging as part of this pendulum swinging back the other way, but the idea that it's any worse now than it was like any time up in the 80s, 90s, or early 2000s for LGBT people is just absurd. Also, they keep harping about these anti-LGBT bills, and let's discuss what they actually mean when they talk about that. So the 70 bills, this includes stuff like pretty common sense legislation protecting women's sports and saying that people who are born biologically male can't compete in women's sports because it's not fair. We can have a debate about that and it can be complicated, but that is not exactly a matter of life and death. It is not exactly an all out assault on transgender people. It's a pretty minor role that will only affect an extreme minute percentage of an already very small population in the transgender community, which is transgender athletes. And they can still compete in sports just as their birth sex. So what we're talking about here is not exactly the end of the world. The other big category of bill they're really up in arms about is legislation that restricts the ability of for children to receive cross-sex transition medical treatments. And this is absolutely hotly contested. I personally think a lot of this legislation is onto something in that when you're 14, 15, 16, or even 11 or 12 for puberty blockers, I, I don't think children that young and teens that young can really consent and fully understand life-altering, lifelong decisions. I fully support the right once they are uh, 18 or they're legal adults or the age of consent in their state to medically transition if that's what's right for them, if they're persistent in their gender dysphoria. But I don't think it's insane to say that kids can't consent to sex changes. I really don't. I don't think that's an unprecedented attack on LGBT rights because until very recently, nobody was doing child sex changes in most almost any circumstances in the U.S. So at most, this is taking us back to where things were just a few years ago. And so the entire declaration, this entire hysterical alarmist narrative it's just not based in anything. There's no there there. And to the extent there are some things that should be pushed back against, I've spoken about against certain bills, against certain commentaries, certain backlash, you are undermining the credibility of your own argument by conflating it with stuff like this, with this alarmist narrative. Whatever grains of truth that you might have or legitimate concerns or critiques, 
people are just going to tune you out because they're going to think you're hysterical and you're just non full of nonsense because you are. The human rights campaign at this point is a joke. It's a sham. It's actually just frankly, it's an arm of the Democratic Party at this point. I mean, in their scorecards that they give to legislators, you know, who they rank as an LGBTQ plus ally and who they don't, they actually dock you down. They mark you as anti-LGBTQ for your unrelated policy positions on things like immigration and abortion and judges and Obamacare. So it is very much a DNC part of partisan activist organization. And that's why I think we're seeing this hysterical shrieking. I also think, frankly, it reeks of desperation. The biggest battles that activist groups like HRC were founded and focused around were things like gay marriage, things like securing adoption rights for same-sex parents, this equality under the law and anti-discrimination protections. Most of it's been achieved, but they want to keep their multi-million dollar budget, their, you know, a lavish lifestyle where they pal around with A-list celebrities and team up for big celebrity galas. And they want to keep themselves going. They have a multi-million dollar bougie office in Washington, D.C. And I think that's what we're seeing here. They need to keep people scared and alarmed to trick their donors into thinking they still need to fund this organization, even though it's largely irrelevant these days. But I just find it so deeply disheartening and disappointing that a once venerable institution like this would just sell its soul like this, would just go all in on hysteria and hyperbole simply for partisan ends and for its own self-interest. And that is exactly what we're seeing here. And it's just a shame. The media also need to stop just uncritically parroting this, like you heard in that clip and like we saw in headlines when this dropped all across the media. Maybe actually put two seconds of scrutiny when these things happen and don't just accept activist organization statements as fact and, and not even think about them for two seconds. Because if you do, you realize that this national emergency declaration is just hysterical nonsense.